it seems like we're being given more time. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, we shouldn't, you know, relax and go back to sleep because, you know, President Trump is now our president. And everything's fine. I mean, we've got, you know, these midterm elections coming up. We don't know what's going to happen there. We've got the, you know, the 2020 election coming up. They're, they're pushing for Oprah to run against President Trump. And... <laughs> Sharpen Report. I am your host, Sam Johnston. We're found on YouTube, iTunes, and Blog Talk. Well, it's been a little over a year since the world ended. That's right, a little over a year since Donald Trump was elected. And if you listen to the mainstream media at all, that's when the world's supposed to end. But here we are. And instead of leading us towards a brave new world, we are heading down a different path. One that requires bravery and is quite new, but it is not the globalist agenda that we have all been used to. But as we go forward, we have to ask ourselves and keep us in check. Is Donald Trump falling back into that plan? What is that plan? And how do we proceed from here? And as Christians, we have to ask ourselves, is he truly a Christian? Is he someone that we want to follow? And can God even use him if he's not? Well, joining us to answer all these questions, we are joined by Mr. Troy Anderson. Mr. Anderson is co-author of the book, The Trump Trump Trumpocalypse, uh, and he is here to answer all those questions. So, Mr. Anderson, how are you doing today? Um, I'm very good. It's uh, great to be on your show. Thank you very much. Yes, and I'm glad to have you. Unfortunately, Paul McGuire could not make it tonight. He had a prior obligation, but we will go on without him. Um, so, before we get too much into your book, I want to know uh, who you are, where you came from, and how did you end up authoring a book with such a catchy title? Uh, yeah, I've been a journalist for uh, 27 years. I, I grew up in a, a small town in Oregon. Uh, my dad owned a fish cannery. I uh, went to the University, University of Oregon and studied uh, journalism. And I worked in uh, newspapers for two decades. I was a reporter at the LA Daily News. Uh, I was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize at one point for an uh, investigative series. And, uh, you know, for several years, I after I left newspapers, I, you know, uh, freelanced for Reuters and Newsmax and Christianity Today and Charisma. And then for a couple of years, I was uh, executive editor of Charisma Magazine. And then uh, my co-author, Paul McGuire, and I have written two books. Uh, first one's a, a globalism expose called The Babylon Code. And the second book is this new one, uh, Trumpocalypse. Yeah, both excellent books, too. Uh, yeah, I would definitely urge everyone to go pick up the books and, and read them, obviously. So, But we're going to talk about it. So the, the name Trumpocalypse, how did you come up with a name like that? I mean, that's that grabs attention for sure. Yeah. So what what happened is, uh, you know, so like, like I said, the Babylon Co. was an expose of globalism. We did did over 100 interviews with, uh, you know, faith leaders and Bible scholars and experts in geopolitics and, you know, military affairs, intelligence, science, economics. And um, uh, and then, you know, then President Trump campaigned on a on a platform of Americanism, not globalism will be our credo. And then, you know, everybody thought that Hillary Clinton was going to win. And then all of a sudden, November, he won. And so my co-author, Paul McGuire, he's a uh, used to be a Fox News and History Channel commentator. Uh, he's got a, a God TV show now called Apocalypse of the End Times. He called me and he was like really passionate about this. And he felt that, uh, you know, the surprise election of Donald Trump, you know, which sent shockwaves around the world, that perhaps, you know, God played some role in this. And so at, at the time, uh, there was all these headlines in the New York Times and the Washington Post talking about the Trumpocalypse. And it's this this media main that's, uh, you know, this this concern that if, if Trump was elected, that he'd bring about the end of the world. There was like Nostradamus specials and all kinds of headlines about this. And so we uh, we talked to our agent, our literary agent. And um, and so we're talking about, you know, the, the second book in the series, essentially. And he said, why, why don't we call this Trumpocalypse? Because he'd heard this this title in the in the media. And so we decided to call it Trumpocalypse. I mean, and it uh, it fits well with what we're going through now, especially with the mainstream media continuing to push that narrative that he is a lunatic that's going to get us all blown up. Uh, and, and you even see, you, you I mean, it felt like it was the coming uh, coming of the second Cold War with the North Korea heating up again, and it seems like we're going to get into a nuclear war. Uh, and you guys talked about that a lot in your book. Yeah, we actually dedicate the the first, uh, I think it's chapter one, two, and three to this whole topic. 
you know, as you know, when we're, when we're writing the book, the uh, this whole thing of North Korea hadn't really emerged yet. But as we're sort of like in the middle of it, uh, the whole thing of North Korea started. You know, you had these threats by Kim Jong Un to you know attack America of nuclear weapons, and he he's even hinted at a you know an EMP EMP attack in our country. And you know, we saw this you know war of words, rhetorical war between President Trump and Kim Jong Un. You know, and now recently we got you know last week President Putin came out and said that he's got nuclear weapons that can evade our, our anti-ballistic missiles. And so, you know, this has become a, a you know, a global story and, and uh, you know, everybody's very concerned about this. Polls show that, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the greatest concerns of Americans is that we could end up in some kind of major war. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's a, a, you know, a very uh, sobering topic that's on the, the minds of people, you know, worldwide right now. Is it something that we, that in your mind, is it something that you think Donald Trump's going to lead us to, the third world war with nuclear weapons going off all place? Well, I mean, you know, what, what we talk about in the book is that, you know, we believe God raised him up for this, you know, one of the most prophetically significant times in history. And the question is, you know, what, what's his purpose? You know, the, the Bible talks about God de deposing leaders and raising them up. And so, you know, what is his purpose? And, you know, we, we, we believe that he's got sort of the this, this skill set. You know, he's, he's sort of got a warrior spirit. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's a strong man, strong leader. And maybe that's what the world needs now. You know, of course, now we're seeing, you know, per perhaps possibly, you know, North Korea willing to negotiate. And so did President Trump's, you know, strong stance, you know, essentially threatening. I mean, at one point last year at the United Nations, he he threatened to totally destroy North Korea. Yeah. And, you know, they increased the, the sanctions on him. And now they're maybe if they're not, if they're not you know, pull, pulling our leg, um, you know, willing to negotiate now. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we resolve this situation. Yeah. And you talk a lot about the the secret plan of the occultists and, and I mean, whatever name you want to throw out on the Illuminati, uh, secret secret societies. Uh, one, what is the what is that plan and how does Trump either play into it or stop it? Well, yeah, I mean, this is a big question on people's minds is, you know, that there's, you know, people are becoming more aware of these secret societies and the, you know, influential, you know, the influence they've had over politics or, you know, decades, if not centuries. And uh, so the question is, is, you know, is President Trump, is he a member of one of these secret societies? Is he influenced by them? Uh, you know, is he is he part of this, you know, this plan or is he an outsider? And what, what we argue is that, you know, nobody knows for, you know, for certain, but uh, the evidence seems to su suggest that he's an outsider. He's he's sort of standing between us and, and this, you know, this plan that the elite would like to, you know, foist on the world. And in fact, if you go on the Lucius uh, Trust the website, they have consultative status with the United Nations. You know, it used to be called the Lucifer Publishing Company. <laughs> Uh, they actually, you know, have, have books on there uh, written by Alice Bailey, who's an occultist back in the 1940s, uh, and she talks about what they call the plan, and they lay out in very, you know, exacting detail exactly what the elite would like to do. In fact, she she estimated that this this new world government world system would be online by 2025, and she wrote this back in you know 1940s. Yeah, absolutely. But but now you see Trump instead of pushing us towards a new world order, you see him raising uh, tariffs against other countries and really starting to build up uh, at least financial walls. Maybe not the the southern border like we were all hoping, uh, but he's definitely pushing us towards a in America first agenda definitely not the smoothest transition but we seem to be getting there so far uh you touched on on uh on an aspect of his his faith and as christians it's it can be really hard to to follow a man uh who has said some really crude things in the past uh how how can we how can we follow someone who's like that yeah, you know, so if you, if you look back through the Bible, the you know, there's many characters in the Bible that were, you know, flawed individuals that God used, flawed leaders. You know, if you look at uh, King David, you know, he committed adultery and then, you know, c killed the guy to cover up the, the adultery. Uh, you know, Moses, you know, killed a man. Uh, Noah got drunk. Uh, you know, Peter denied he even knew Jesus three times, you know, during the, uh, the night of the before the crucifixion. You know, there's many flawed leaders that God has used. Uh, you know, some some people are talking about comparing, you know, President Trump to uh, King Cyrus, who is a, a pagan pagan king in the in the Old Testament. He freed the Jews from you know, captivity with the Babylonians, and then you know permitted them to uh, build the second temple. So, you know, you know, 
you know, Trump is obviously a, a flawed man. Is you know led you know somewhat of an immoral life for much of his life but you know the the thing is that god could pretty much use anybody and so you know maybe he's the only guy that could have won this election at this time and god do that and you know so so far he's sort of you know uh promoting judeo-christian kind of ideas and and things of that nature is not perfect but uh you know we seem to be heading the right direction like you mentioned you know he's sort of you know stalling this this whole push towards a you know this new world order or, or some kind of a global system what what do you think makes trump the guy that god would choose i mean obviously we don't know for sure but what what about him puts him in a position like this well, i mean he, he's the first uh, president we've ever had that's really stood up to the to the elite stood up to the to the globalist uh, you know he's very brave you know i mean there's all kinds of you know assassination threats against him and you know threats on his life and he, he and his family and and you know he's just sort of he's made it made it this far and and uh you know so perhaps bravery maybe you know being a brave individual was what god you know looked for you know the bible is essentially a history of a very brave men and and women who who did what god you know sort of called them to do and so in, in that sense you know maybe, maybe we need a real brave president for this time in history yeah, definitely full of brave people who aren't always so excited about being brave. You have people like Moses who's like, really, do I have to do this? And then they end up, God empowers them uh, and they end up changing a whole nation. Uh, so uh, a lot of your book focuses on things that could happen in the future. Uh, things like a coming economic crash, which before Trump, uh, I saw a lot of people predicting that there was going to be this huge economic crisis that was going to well, one ushers into the the new world order where we have to rely on the world government to to fix it. Um, and you still talk about that as a as a potential reality. Uh, can you expand on that? Yeah, so we have, we have a chapter that talks about the um, the economic reset. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, Christine Lagarde, who's the the head of IMF, uh, made an interesting speech. I think it was at the National Press Club where she talked about uh, a reset of the global economy, how we need to reset the economy. And uh, I think I, I cite some Harvard economists who said that, you know, the, the debt levels of nations worldwide is at a, a two century high mark. And so, you know, I interviewed Chuck Missler for, for this book, uh, you know, among many prophecy experts. And he said that you know, there's essentially no way we're ever gonna repay all these debts. And so at some point there's gonna be some kind of, you know, economic implosion unless we can, you know, perhaps grow our you know way out of this, this gigantic hole. Uh, so, you know, the question is, could the elite, you know, trigger some kind of, you know, economic collapse or, or a reset? Could we, you know, be reset into some kind of new global currency? Um, you know, right right now, the economy is doing relatively OK. We've had some, you know, big bumps in the stock market. So people are concerned we could see a, a correction. Uh, but, you know, n nobody really knows what's going to happen. And, and the, the elite, you know, have made it clear that they do plan to, you know, some kind of catastrophe, perhaps to. Uh, you know, bring about their global system. So it's, you know, it's just still a, a big question mark. Yeah. Can you expand on that last sentence? You said that they have made it clear that they plan to bring a catastrophe. What do you mean by that? Oh, okay. Maybe I overstated that a bit, but, it, you know, different different prophecy experts, uh, you know, believe that th this may be one of the things that the elite will try to do at some point mm, okay. is, uh, you know, some kind of catastrophe, uh, either economic or military or you know, perhaps something else that could, you know, create the the environment in the world where they could bring this global system online. Uh, you know, most people think that we're probably not going to have some kind of world government system, you know, for it could be, you know, decades or uh, a century away, the way things are in the world now, it'd be very difficult to get all the, the nations to agree on something like this. But if you have some kind of great crisis, a, a nuclear detonation or something like that, there would certainly be, you know, calls uh, worldwide for some kind of, you know, global, you know, like a political authority to, uh, you know, rid the world of nuclear weapons or address climate change or something like that. And perhaps that could be the catalyst, uh, to, you know, to bring, you know, this, this system that they'd like to bring online. Yeah, definitely. You hear constantly how, uh, well, especially the UN and a lot of other countries kind of complaining about Trump's policy on, um, on climate change and really calling for him to reevaluate what he, what he, he thinks about the topic, which I, I, I think that's one aspect of him that I like is that he's not willing to give into this uh, global warming agenda. Uh, 
a couple interesting th things have happened just recently with Trump that has kind of made me question him a little bit. Uh, one in the news, China China's leader has kind of taken over as the world dictator, and he comes on and he says, oh yeah, China's leader's a great person, uh, and maybe I should try being the leader. Well, obviously the second part is a joke, but he he's really starting to lift up the, the Chinese leader as this dictator. Does that concern you at all? Do you think that it's possible for him to kind of forego his original basis of America first and kind of fall into this globalist trap? Well, yeah, I mean, there's several things that have happened recently that are, that are concerning. I mean, you know, certainly this, you know, the comment regarding the, the Chinese president is, is concerning. Uh, you know, essentially China is, is still a, a communist country and, and um, you know, has become, a, 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 you know, on the way of becoming a global superpower. They, their, their economy is growing uh, rapidly. They're building up their military as well as, you know, Russia. And so these are these are concerns, and and if you have a you know, Chinese president who essentially abolishes term limits and he can stay in there for the rest of his life, you know, he's sort of like a, a dictator essentially. Um, and you know, we have a democratic system here that's worked very well, so we you know we certainly don't want to change that. And then um, you know this this whole thing of this peace plan, you know, the Bible Bible warns that uh, you're not to divide the land of Israel, and so. You know, it's, it's pretty concerning. You know, I'm not exactly sure all the details yet, but uh, you know, the Bible warns against dividing Jerusalem and, and dividing the, the you know the the land that God gave uh, the Jewish people. So, you know, we need to tread very carefully in in how that is uh, uh, proceeds there. Yeah, can you expand on the peace plan for those who might not know uh, exactly what has been said about that? Yeah, I haven't followed it super closely, but but essentially, you know that you know Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, has been trying to negotiate some kind of you know peace plan in the Middle East. Uh, you know, of course, it'd be nice to have you know a peaceful situation with between Israel and, and its neighbors, uh, but it's all you know sort of the, the devil are in the details and and how it's all negotiated. I mean, you know, they're they're talking about a proposed two-state solution. Uh, you know, and there, there's you know warnings in the Bible about you know dividing you know God's land. So uh, you know that, that's concerning, and you know there's many. I'm sort of you know seeing more chatter about uh, about this in the on social media and in the news that there's you know concerns about you know just what are going to be the details of this plan if it goes forward? I mean, there's been many presidents who have tried to do this and they've all been unsuccessful. So, you know, the chance of success here is probably fairly low, but you know, you, you never know. It's definitely, it's definitely an interesting idea because who doesn't want peace, but at the same time, it's like, well, maybe that's not the greatest idea. Um, hmm. But uh, another, another huge aspect of your book is you had the opportunity to interview uh, Billy Grant, um, who obviously has recently passed away. Can you tell me just about that, who he is and, and just that, that interaction that you've had with him? He, yeah, so th this was a, a few years ago before his health really started to de deteriorate. Uh, you know, he, he died here uh, February 21st at age uh, 99. Uh, but, you know, but Billy Graham uh, is, a, is a world-renowned evangelist. He spent, uh, you know, seven decades uh, traveling around the world, uh, preaching at, you know, large coliseums and stadiums and other events. And, you know, he, he preached to uh, 2.2 billion people via, you know, live live events and radio and TV and, you know, wrote, he wrote, uh, you know, dozens of books that sold, you know, millions of copies and, and, uh, you know, just a, a very inspiring, I think, you know, Gallup listed him as the world's most admired man, 60 record, 61 times, <laughs> you know, more than any, any other person on earth. And, uh, you know, he was an advisor to many presidents. And uh, so I got a chance to interview him a, a few years ago. And so I, you know, I asked him questions about the second coming because, you know, this has been a uh, interest of mine since I was little. And, and he told me that, you know, he believed that signs of the end of the age are converging for the first time since Jesus made those predictions. And, uh, and he said uh, he, he compared America to ancient uh, Nineveh. And he said that when God sent the prophet Jonah to Nineveh to warn, uh, you know, the, warn them of impending judgment that the king and the people repented. And he said that he believed the same thing could happen again in America. So we, we included a, a section in the conclusion of the book called uh, When Billy Graham Goes to Heaven. And then I also interviewed his daughter, uh, Anne Graham Lotz. And, uh, uh, you know, because she, she felt that uh, her dad's long life uh, may have something to do with the second coming. There's 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 things in the Bible about when the, the prophet of the generation dies, that that's, a, you know, a prophetically significant event. So people have been, you know, last couple of weeks, people have been asking, what does this mean that Billy Graham lived to be 99 and now he's died? You know, uh, what, what does this mean uh, prophetically? Uh, what do you think it means prophetically? 
I, I, you know, some of the some of the things that people are saying is that, you know, could there, you know, could, could he pass on sort of the mantle of his ministry? Could, uh, uh, you know, could there be some kind of revival now? Could there be judgment? Um, you know, Angram Lodge, she, she told she told me that she uh, told her dad a long time ago, she compared him to Methuselah, who is the oldest man in the Bible. I think he lived to be 965 years old or something like that. And he was actually uh, Noah's uh, grandfather. And the uh, extra biblical legend holds that um, seven days after Methuselah died, and his name meant when it when it uh, when when he goes or when when it comes or when when he dies it shall come. I think is what Methuselah meant. And so seven days after Methuselah died, the Noah's flood happened. And so Angram Lotz told her dad that you know she thought there may be some kind of you know prophetic connection between Methuselah. And, and her dad and the fact that he lived so long and so you know she was you know wondering uh you know what what, what might happen and then she she gave a very powerful uh, uh speech at his uh, or eulogy at his uh, funeral last friday and uh, uh you know talked about the you know the significance of his long life and and what his uh, the date of his death might mean and i think she, she had mentioned that uh, uh, you know, Moses uh, was, a, was a, you know, the liberator of the Jewish people. He freed them from slavery in, in, uh, in Egypt. And then he took the people to the, the promised land and then, uh, uh, you know, died. And then Joshua, uh, whose name is, uh, I guess, translated as, as Jesus in the New Testament, uh, you know, it, it was his responsibility to, you know, free his people. So she compared uh, Billy Graham to to, to, to Moses in that sense, and that he, you know, he freed people from their sins. It was probably hundreds of millions of people that, you know, directly or indirectly, you know, came to the Lord through Billy Graham's ministry. Uh, so it's, it's certainly a, a, you know, a significant event. And, and the last week we saw essentially the, the gospel being preached throughout the whole world as people watched, you know, Billy Graham specials and read stories and watched his old sermons and uh, quite, quite a week. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that there is a an interesting comparison between uh, the message that Billy Graham pushed, obviously the gospel, but his his pursuit of trying to free people from those change, chains and comparing them to the message that Donald Trump is trying to to push across is trying to free America from this these globalist chains. Do you think there's a comparison there? Yeah, I, I guess you could make uh, some kind of comparison there. Uh, you know, if, if Donald Trump is truly... Uh, you know, trying to sort of free us from, you know, the, the globalist, you know, plans, their their attempt to essentially enslave humanity. Uh, and, you know, Billy Graham was essentially trying to, you know, uh, free free us from the enslavement of sin. Uh, you know, in, in a way, they're sort of accomplishing a, a similar mission. I mean, we, we argue in the book that uh, perhaps, you know, we're getting we're giving, being given a reprieve now, sort of an extension of time in which, you know, America can go on to help uh, you know, fulfill its prophetic destiny and began with the pilgrims to take the gospel to all the world. And so, you know, we, we believe that God's sort of given us more time here. And President Trump is, you know, essentially sort of, you know, giving us more time to fulfill the Great Commission. Uh, and and along with Trump, you, you see a lot of people saying things about Billy Graham, that he was just kind of a, uh, he was just a show and he never really did any of the good things that he did. Having met him personally, uh, do any of those things have any truth to them? Uh, you, you know, I mean, you know, from everything I can tell, everybody I've, I've interviewed and talked to about Billy Graham, he's, he's pretty much the same guy that you saw in, in public and, and in, in person. You know, I was just at the Billy Graham Training Center at uh, the Cove in North Carolina a few weeks ago. We, we met to pray about uh, uh, National Day Repentance. It's the that's a friend of mine is uh, uh, working on, and uh, you know I talked to people there, and and uh, you know this everybody spoke very highly of Billy Graham, and and uh, you know it's a very be- beloved man. I mean, it was all kinds of secular leaders have come out and and said you know very you know wonderful things about him. You know, so, so certainly there's there's criticism, and he made some some mistakes during his life, but uh, you know overall I think he exemplified a you know a, a good Christian life is a good example for us. So kind of getting back to your book, we kind of got off, just, I got distracted by Billy Graham because, I don't know, anyway. Uh, anyway, getting back to your book, um, you talk a lot about, you talk about the future, but you don't set any dates, which I think is wise. Uh, with Trump being a president and heading down the direction that he's going, what do you see our future being like with Trump becoming president? Well, um, you know, I, I think, you know, God, God's given us a choice right now. I mean, we're certainly living in a very dangerous time. There's all these threats. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of things that might happen. But, I, I, you know, it seems like God's sort of holding all this stuff back. 
and uh, he's given us more time. And, and uh, you know, the, the Bible, you know, r- sort of repeatedly talks about when you when a culture or a nation or a society gets to the point where it's sort of like on the verge of judgment or, you know, bad things happening, you know, the solution is to turn back to God and repent of our sins. So I think, you know, God's very patient and uh, and lo- loves us very much. And there's still many people who've never heard the gospel. So there's still a, you know a great amount of work for for Christians to do to take the the good news throughout the world. So I, it seems like we're being given more time. But uh, you know it, it's, it's, we shouldn't you know relax and go back to sleep because you know President Trump is and now our president. And everything's fine. I mean we've got you know these midterm elections coming up. We don't know what's going to happen there. We've got the you know the 2020 election coming up. They're they're pushing for Oprah to run against <laughs> President Trump and and uh, you know poll, polls. I cite some polls in our book. We actually have a little section called Trump versus Oprah, and uh, the polls show that you know if, if she had ran you know here recently that she could actually beat him you mm-hmm. know and so and she promotes new age ideas and new age beliefs and sort of a, a cultic kind of stuff. So you know we're not out of the woods yet. What. Yeah, I think I think you are spot on with that because it's so easy to say, oh, things are going well, so let's just let it, let's them, let them go, and that's exactly how we got into this mess in the first place is because we fell asleep, you know, and then we let the globals take over. So, what can people do uh, to make sure that we don't fall asleep, and then even more specifically, what can Christians do so we can, you know, keep this momentum heading in the right direction? Yeah, yeah, I think there's there's several things, uh, you know. So in the in the last chapter of the book, we talk about this proposed National Day of repentance. Uh, the the last president to call for a National Day of repentance was Abraham Lincoln, at the height of the Civil War, and, and they'd had many National Days of repentance uh, prior to that time. Uh, but the height of the Civil War, it, you know, it seemed like you know the Northern side might lose, and so he called for a National Day. I think he called it a National Day of, of prayer fasting and, and humiliation. And in his proclamation, he repented of the national sins of, of America. And, uh, you know, then, you know, the, the Abraham Lincoln's, you know, the Northern side went on to win the Civil War. Uh, so a friend of ours named Kevin Jessup, he runs the Global Strategic Alliance. Uh, it's a, a ministry re- seeking to restore Judeo-Christian values. He's working with members of Congress and um, and some uh, an attorney on, on drafting this this uh, proposed national day of uh, repentance and if, if president trump agreed to this uh you know the idea would he would give up an address from the for the global from the oval office it'd be uh, globally televised and uh and repent of the nation's sins and he would, he'd be joined by faith leaders and and uh, political leaders uh angram lots has talked to kevin about this and rabbi khan said he, he would do a, a passover cedar uh, we, we don't know if it's going to happen or not, but that's that's one thing that's that's in the works uh, potentially. Uh, also, you know, I mean, people should get involved in politics. You know, we, you should you should vote. You know, we, we essentially you know we we let go of our democracy for decades now and just sort of let let like the elite and the globalists and you know very powerful forces take over. And now we're reaping the consequences of this. So, you know, uh, believers should should get involved in you know local, state, and national politics and and vote and participate in our democracy. That's very important. And then then also you know I mean the church is you know sort of dropped the ball for a long time now too. We didn't tell people the truth about what's really going on. And, uh, you know, we've, you know, there's a certain amount of corruption that's going on in, within the church. And, and um, you know, so we need to, you know, we all need to repent of our sins and, and turn back to God and, and you know, seek, seek God and what he's calling us to do, what his, what his destiny is for our lives. Amen. Absolutely. I definitely agree. We have to continue to dig our feet in and dig our teeth into these matters, even though it's, it's really not always that fun to talk about or discuss, you know, controversial topics. Uh, it's so important to actually keep that the discussion going so we don't lose track of where we are. Uh, so I always let my audience know ahead of time who's coming on the show so it gives them an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, and if you want this opportunity, well, you have to do the thing where you subscribe and whatnot to the channel. But anyway, uh, the, I had two questions for you today. Um, one, well, one says they love you guys. That was the first line. Uh, and then they, and I, and I want you to talk about this because uh, they, the first person, uh, Jason, he, he asks, um, he, he asked kind of referencing that maybe you guys are, are preaching some doom and gloom message and how that is versus the, the optimistic outlook that we kind of see, uh, dueling today. So I guess, can you speak on the idea that are, are you guys talking about doom and gloom or is that not really your message? 
uh, you know, I, I'd say it's, it's, it's sort of a mix. You know, I mean, many of the prophets in the Bible, you could say that they were sort of doom and gloom. Uh, but actually, our, our message is, is very hopeful. We're, we're very optimistic that, uh, that people, you know, Americans will do the right thing, that Christians will do the right thing, and that, you know, God's given us more time, and that, you know, we could have a very uh, hopeful future. But, the, you know, the, the main message is that we need to do what's right. You know, we need to turn back to God, repent of our sins. And just like, you know, Billy Graham told me, this is our, you know, people say this is our Nineveh moment, that, uh, you know, if, if we wake up and we do what's right, we turn back to God, you know, we can be given a, an, a very extended reprieve. You know, of course, you know, the Bible, the predictions in the Bible are going to come true at some point, but we believe that, you know, God could certainly, you know, give us far more time. And there's certainly a lot of work to do to fulfill the Great Commission and and do all the things that Jesus told us to do. So we're actually very optimistic. We, we believe there could be a, a revival in the end times. Maybe it's all sort of mixed together. Maybe you've got bad things happening and revival happening at the same time. Uh, you know, only only God knows and only the future will tell. Uh, but we're actually very optimistic and uh, uh, believe that, uh, you know, if, if you look back in American history, it's sort of like at the, the worst times, like the American Revolution, uh, the Civil War, the Great Depression, World War II. It's like it, it almost looks like everything's lost. You know, and and we're we're about you know we're about to lose everything, and then Americans just sort of seem to have this. They pull themselves up by their bootstraps, and they they get to work, and they do it right, and then you know everything's okay. So that's what we're hoping uh, that people will get from this. The message from this book is that you know it's time to take action and, and be brave, and and you know stand up to the the global elite, and don't let them just you know don't let evil run run over our country. Absolutely, I definitely agree with that. Uh, I love I love that aspect about uh, you know. I mean, not exclusively Americans, but largely in our culture, the idea that if you work hard, then you can succeed. And it's and the even though the the victim mentality is really starting to move into our culture, still that the overall theme of America is let's get to it and let's fix it. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, the second question uh, is there are a lot of countries kind of lining up against Israel. Uh, do you think that? Um, all the players are in position for the fulfillment of Psalm 83, um, which is kind of just the nations come against Israel. Yeah, I mean, we've certainly seen this this happen lately with uh, you know Tur- Turkey and Iran and and uh, you know Russia and all these different countries. I mean the you know the the coalition of nations that the Bible talks about. Uh, you know, potentially attacking Iran, know, attacking Israel, either the Ezekiel 38, 39 prophecy or the, or this this Psalm Psalm one, which was somewhat controversial, but uh, you know that we we see this happening. So, you know, essentially, you know, I, I interviewed you know dozens of, of prophecy experts for both of these books. Everybody from you know Billy Graham and Tim LaHaye to you know Hal Lindsey and uh, Joel Rosenberg, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, Chuck Missler. I mean, it just, you know, the list goes on and on. And the, and the consensus among all these experts is that we're, we're in the run up to these events the Bible predicts. And uh, uh, even secular experts, you know, they, I interview, you know, people at uh, uh, Noam Chomsky and professors at Princeton and Oxford and, uh, you know, the guys at the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford. They believe we're in the run up to the end of human civilization. They're concerned about nuclear war and, you know, climate change and artificial intelligence run amok and, uh, you know, some kind of global pandemic and things like that. So we're, we're living in a very dangerous time. So it's, it behooves us to, to wake up and, and, you know, do what we're supposed to do and uh so you know but, but to get back to this question on israel yes you know israel's in a, in a dangerous position the prime minister is you know facing the this you know indictment or these charges and uh you know he's been a great prime minister so i don't know all the details on that but uh you know there's just like in anything there's always you know politics behind things and and uh you know israel's facing great danger so it's very important for us to pray for israel and and uh, support the country it definitely how do you well kind of build on that how do you think america's role will fit into that do you think that we'll step up and defend israel do you think that we'll maybe fall in line with the other countries uh you know at this time you know president trump has been very supportive of israel so if i, I imagine if, if israel faced some kind of threat we would certainly come to their to their aid but i have no reason to doubt that but but the bible does say that whenever this you know the especially this this you know ezekiel 38 39 more that all the nations of the world will, will come against israel so um you know, at some point that that'll apparently happen so the question is is america still on the scene have we been taken out 
you know, uh, what what happened to us, you know, or did we join in this global system? You know, of course, nobody knows the answers to those questions, but, uh, you know, maybe people are, you know, uh, asking uh, those, those kind of questions. And, and you don't have to answer this next question uh, if you don't want to. I do, I, uh, with you interviewing so many people and researching for this book, have you ran across people who think that the leaders of Israel are, are actually part of this the, the globalist agenda, and they're kind of maybe at the forefront of deceiving people into leading them into the New World Order. Uh, yeah, you know, I, actually, we, we touch on some of that in, in the book. Uh, you know, there, there's all these rabbis uh, in Israel who are talking about the Messiah, uh, you know, that they, they believe the Messiah may be here or may be soon appearing. And, you know, the question is, what Messiah are they talking about? I mean, you know, presumably they're talking about the, the Jewish Messiah, uh, which you know would not be uh, Jesus Christ at least, at least at this point. Um, so um, you know, there's uh, you know I haven't delved you know extensively into this whole topic, but I've I've heard some of this out there, and and it it is uh, you know quite intriguing, and and only time will tell how this how this all unfolds. But uh, yeah, you know there there are you know I, I do have concerns. Yeah, it would make sense that Satan would use a country like Israel to be a front for its ushering in of the New World Order because of people's willingness to support it because of uh, a lot of scripture references. So I, that could make sense to me how that would be. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you on that. Uh, before we uh, wrap up, is there anything that's been on your heart that you really want to discuss or that you haven't really had the opportunity to talk about? Well, you know, just to sort of summarize here, uh, you know, the central message of, of this book and the last book is that, you know, we, we need to turn back to God and, uh, you know, a national day of repentance will be a, a very nice step in, in this direction. And, and, and you know, for, for your, your uh, you know, your, your viewers, uh, you know, t maybe, you know, take this time now to, you know, Pray to, pray to the Lord if you haven't accepted Christ and ask him for forgiveness of sins. The Bible tells us, you know, God will forgive us of our sins and then you'll be, you'll, you'll go to heaven one day. Uh, so, you know, today is a day of salvation and, um, you know, we, we never, we don't know how much time we have left. So, uh, you know, perhaps now would be a good time to, you know, get, get right with God. Absolutely, guys. Definitely time to get, get right with God. Um, Mr. Anderson, thank you so much for coming on the Sharpen Report. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, great, great honor. Guys, definitely go out and buy the book. It's We only scratched the surface of what this book is about. And with a name like Trumpocalypse, you just kind of want to wonder what's in, what's in it, what's coming. And, and it's uh, well-researched and... Um, I definitely think you should take a look. Guys, that's our show. It's a little bit shorter tonight, but it was to the point and we got a lot of great information in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm not going to ask you to like, subscribe, or share, but you know I appreciate it if you do. Um, but that's it this week. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope they have a great week.